Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is the greatest time of the day. From the center of the universe, New York City, it's the main event you've been waiting for. It's time to go in the cage with Cyclone! And welcome back. Your Messiah has come home once again on this rainy, cold, icky Monday afternoon, evening, depending where you are. I don't need these right now because I'm kind of blind, kind of not blind. Um, so there is so much going on in MMA this past weekend. It's crazy. Had some boxing again this weekend. But... I want to talk about something right off the bat. Let's talk professionalism, okay? And, you know, people are like, oh, you really don't want to do this, Cyclone? Um, yeah, I really do. And being it's my show, I'm going to do it. Um, here's the thing. When... You try to do something in life, whether it's playing tic-tac-toe or being the president of the United States or the emperor of the universe, you want to be a professional. And there's codes of ethics when you do stuff in life. Some of us have those ethics, some of us don't. Now, now I'm not totally going to name names. Um, because I'm going to save that for when I write my book, because that's just going to be so much more juicier, and save it for the, the Lifetime movie when, you know, I don't know, King Kong Bundy's dead, so I don't know who will play me. You know what, Kevin James could play me, you know. Um, but yeah, here's the thing. If three quarters of a production staff are ready to work because you see there's something called a pre-production meeting where you talk about what's going to happen and then there's something called a post-production meeting when you discuss what has happened if you don't have that stuff you have chaos and i'm not talking about colby covington chaos you need to have not chaos okay um, you can't, you can't let things slide when they when, when they, they just aren't done properly. Okay. From the way you dress, from the, the way you act, because I fully believe, believe it or not, I believe in karma. Okay. And. Karma will eventually catch up. Now, I'm the type of person that thinks six, seven, eight, nine steps ahead of most people. So, although I will say it publicly now, yours truly has been let go from Jackhammer Promotions. Um, I'm not going to rip them, okay? I, I refuse to do that. But that being said, there, there are some levels that, that need upgrade. Production needs to be upgraded. And without me and the visions that I bring, production is going to stay the same level. Now, you want to talk about a truly professional organization? Staten Island, New York. Warriors of Wrestling. Check them out on Facebook. Check out Warriors of wrestling.com 
Joe Bellini runs a professional organization. Here's the deal. Every wrestler from, from the best of the best in his organization to the worst of the worst set up the ch seating, set up the ring, break down the ring, break down the seating. Everyone helps out. When you have someone that doesn't help out and thinks they're Jesus, you have issues. And if you decide to put blinders on and not see those issues, you yourself will never improve. So I'm just trying to help, even though I'm not going to be there anymore. I'm just trying to help them. Other things that are professional. Right freaking here in Strong Island Television. Okay. Bobby Lissera in the back room, well, room right there, wouldn't stand for unprofessionalism. Wouldn't, wouldn't go for it. Wouldn't, you wouldn't last a second if you weren't professional. There's a reason for his success. Because he's a professional. Same thing with Curtis Williams and the Big Curtis Show. Same thing with MMAUK.net, as well as in the Girls' Corner. It's a professionally run sh show, much like this one. Now, look, I, I'm going to simmer down a bit because I'm starting to work myself up again. And that's not good because... If I died on live stream, I mean, I'm sure it might make some people's funny YouTube pages, but eh, I'd just rather not do it. I'd rather die, you know, go out, you know, in a blaze of glory. Um, not that you guys watching is in a blaze of glory, mind you, but that being said, I want you guys to do me some favors, and I'm begging you now, click share. It would mean a lot to me if you shared the show. Check out CycloneComedy.com. I just put up my new acting demo. New dates are coming for shows. I am going to be starting in July. A new day, a new time for the Cyclone Variety Show. See all those dates on the website. Um... Check out Psyche Prods on Facebook. Raffles giving away free prizes constantly. Kenny Hodgkins is on an incredible hot streak right now. Okay. So check out that stuff. Like I said, check out the Big Curtis Show. Check out in the Girls' Corner. Um, keep it right here. Strong Island Television. Non-stop. And see the best shows, the most professional shows. Okay, everything from Rudy's Room to the Dennis Newman Show to 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 Unger the Radar, they are all top-notch shows. And you know what? Special prize for you guys. Very shortly, if you go to EffectiveAggression.com, one of the most funniest people on this planet... Tracy Morgan, sign this glove right here for me, okay? It's going to be up for purchase. So if you like comedy, Tracy Morgan's the cream of the crop. And it'll be up for sale really soon. So keep on checking EffectiveAggression.com. And we got some games for you. We're going to talk PFL. We're going to talk... UFC this weekend and, and Bellator this weekend. And we're going to talk PFL too. And we're going to start off with some boxing right after this. This is Frank Edgar. This is the Barbarian Tim Bosch. I'm World Series of Fighting undefeated lightweight champion Justin Gaethje. The MMA legend, UFC Hall of Famer, Ice Man. Chuck it up. If you got the guts, step in the cage with Cyclone.
Okie dokie smokies wheezes back and let me slide this stuff over because I don't need it right now. So many notes because so much happened. Um Thank you, Sterling. Yeah, I am good. And welcome aboard. Um No Rudy, it, it's the Dennis Newman show. You have to watch. Okay. Um anyways. Like you guys remember last week, I did my pound for pound listings. Jared Heard on my pound for pound list did not show up Saturday night. I, I you know, when you're a champion, you, there's a level of expectation. Okay, you must bring your A game. All the time. Or else you're going to get smoked. And here's the deal. Julian Williams dropped Heard in the second round. He won just about every round except I gave Heard the sixth. I gave Heard the eighth. And I, I'm trying to remember, did I give him the eleventh? I gave him either the 10th or the 11th. And it's frustrating as a fan, as a reporter, as a, hey, Marty Huggins, speaking about fighters, speaking about professionals. Yo, Marty, listen, and I'm going to get off boxing for a second. I am telling you, and I am telling the public, I swear to you, Marty, I am going to hook up with another organization and we're going to get you into the cage fighting again. Okay? Where, I don't know. I guess now that, that I've been let go from two organizations, I guess like they say, the third time's charm. I am looking out for you, Marty. I, 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 I am... I expect to have you fighting on the e Northeast Corridor sometime soon. So get yourself running with the mask on, back on, on, on the treadmill. Start doing that more often because we're going to get you a fight over here, right? Um, hey, Brian. Um, anyways, it is frustrating, like I was saying, to watch a... fight, whether it's boxing, wrestling, or MMA, where someone just doesn't bring it. If you're a champ, you have to bring it. So, Jared Hurd winds up getting smoked. He easily lost a unanimous decision. Wasn't even close. You know, you can't even make the argument, eh, did he win? Did he lose? Eh, maybe the judges scored this way. What the hell were the judges watching? No. It was a clean sweep. It was like 120, 108, something, something like that. It, it, it was bad. It was really bad. And to be, for me to put him on my top 12 list for pound for pound, I wouldn't take him off necessarily. I, I do have to say that. But it is a climb back for him. It was his first career loss, and it wasn't pretty. I would think that, that that you'd rather have your first loss where you are just smoked, knocked out, and you say, hey, I got caught, I got clipped. It happens. For you to go to the distance and for your corner to say something and it, to go in one ear and out the other, as Grandma used to say, I don't know. I just don't know. Um, also, some more boxing news. It has been announced. It is official. July 20th, there is a unification of the welterweight championships starting to, to become a full unification. Um, the first little clip of it is going to be Manny Pacquiao 
who is, I believe, a bazillion years old at this point, um, taking on Keith Thurman. I would like Keith Thurman because you would say the younger guy is faster and stronger, and the fact of the matter is Manny Pacquiao has, like, the fountain of youth in him. He really does. He keeps going. And the fact that he, he's... Um, the senator of uh, Philippine of the Philippines, or, or, or somehow I'm, I'm vapor locking on his title. Manny Pacquiao has so many obligations pulling him left and right in every direction. The fact that he can still fight and fight effectively, with by the way, effective aggression, goes to show you that. Th Manny Pacquiao is truly one of the greats ever. Er. Um, so after those two unify the uh, WBA title, because they both, in technically speaking, they both have a share of the WBA title. Um, it is believed to be in August on Fox. Thank God, because that means free TV um, on a Saturday night. Just hopefully it's not going to be the um, same weekend as an important UFC card or an important Bellator card. Um, Errol Spence and his IBF title is taking on Sean Porter and his WBC uh, championship. Then hopefully those two winners square off. Ha then hold three of the four titles. Um, and, and just looking that far ahead, and I'm going to discuss it even more next week, this little kind of tournament boxing is going to go through. Um, I like Errol Spence. I like Errol Spence big. I like him to knock Sean Porter out. I say fifth, sixth round. Right, Marty? I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, Pacquiao is insane. Unless, of course, you mean the video game Pac-Man, which, I don't know, I always like Miss Pac-Man better than Mr. Pac-Man. Uh, but then you say, that's three-fourths of, of the welterweight championships. The last one being held, of course, by Terrence Crawford, which is the WBO championship. Now, look. Errol Spence said for him to fight Terrence Crawford, which is never going to happen because Al Heyman just doesn't get along with anybody. Um, He wants a 60-40 split on the purse. And there is no way, no way on God's green earth is Terrence Crawford going to allow someone to take a 60-40 split on the, on the purse over him. That's not going to happen. Maybe... Maybe if they came to an agreement of splitting it 50-50, but God forbid, God forbid, and this is the thing I don't understand about boxers, if you split things 50-50, you're still making oodles and oodles of money that your 12th generation down the line of your family will still have money to burn. Why not just do it 50-50? Just because you can make money doesn't mean you necessarily should. There's a thing called bad money. Um, hey, Miss Stellar, I hope you uh, heard the uh, kind words I gave to you. And uh, Rudy, Brooklyn's own who? Brooklyn owns who? Oh, I see what you're saying. No, no, Rudy. Keith Thurman is not going to knock out Manny Pacquiao. That that just doesn't happen. Not in this lifetime. Not in the next lifetime. Not in the one after that. 
maybe in four lifetimes from now, it'll happen. Um, so like I was saying, for Errol to want a 64, and look, don't take anything away. Errol is top of the food chain. But Terrence Crawford's a step higher on the food chain. And that's why I, I, I'm afraid that this fight's never going to happen. And it's a fight that needs to happen. No, not Keith Thurman, Rudy. Here's the thing. It needs to happen. It absolutely does. There's no two ways about it. Okay. Spence has to fight Crawford. They need to. This is going to be another Manny... A Floyd Mayweather situation where they argue about money for 20 freaking years. And you know who loses? All of us. You lose. I lose. He loses. He loses. He loses. She loses. We all lose. Because all of us want to see the two best athletes in their prime go at it. There is nothing sexier than that. Nothing on this planet. Well, you know, maybe there's a couple things more sexier, but I'm not going to get into that topic. Um, speaking of sexy, I want all of your friends to see Mr. Sexy, so pretty please click share. It would be a nice thing. You'd be helping me out. And I really want you to help me out. Uh, so, going to take a quick break. Um, when we come back, we're going to recap the PFL from last week. Why? Because that's what I want to do. But first, I want you guys, like I said, click share. Check out CycloneComedy.com. It's a lot of really good merchandise up for. As a matter of fact, I lowered all my merchandise prices. So get on the site now. Okay. And you know, you know what I'm gonna do? I just thought of this. If you go to cyclonecomedy.com and you buy something on the shop page. I will throw in a free gift. How about that? So you buy one thing, you get a second thing of my choosing for free. How about that? That's a great offer. Okay. So do that now. Click share now. Check out Effective Aggression. Even though it's raining now, the warm weather is coming, I promise you. Some great t-shirts are for sale. And uh, we'll be talking about the PFL when we come back right after this. Hi, I'm Jim Miller. This is Dan Mergliata. I'm Derek Brunson. Yeah, I'm Nick the Carney Lentz, and you're locked into the cage with Cyclone. Okay, so as we know, PFL Season 2 started this past Thursday, and they are. I was really worried, I should say, that with them going to ESPN, that their collective egos would go through the roof. Turns out, they didn't. 
they actually classed up a level, which is hard to believe because last year they were classy. The World Series of Fighting was classy. They've gotten better. Incredibly. Um, us as reporters were completely taken care of. And I was just going to leave this as a clip on, on the Psyche Prods page. Now I figure, you know what? Let me bring it to you. So, um, Roberta Samba, uh, uh, Chad Curtis, Ray Sefo, Kayla Harrison. I did some, I took part of the media scrums, and here they are, my PFL interviews. So I'm just curious, do you, starting it off the season, coming in, obviously the hype is all around Kayla. There's hype around, you know, Sarah Kaufman as well. Mm -hmm. Do you feel comfortable laying low and sliding in and, and catching people off guard? Yes, I am feel, like I say, the girls are very, very talented and very experienced. Uh, but I'm feel I deserve to be here. I'm I'm feel I'm great uh, for I mean ready for the next fight. I'm feel I can be the champion, and um, I don't care who is the next. I just I'm ready for the next fight. You know the the PFL caught a lot of slack going to a 155 pound division. Mm -hmm. You know a lot of organizations cap it at 145. Mm -hmm. Going up to 155. How comfortable are you moving forward? Exactly. Uh, my last fight is in the Bellator in 2015, um, and I fight 145, and I feel very, like, I feel I don't have much strength. I feel like um, right now I feel very comfortable with this way. I feel like I'm that, that way for me. I feel like I'm in perfect uh, division right now, and I'm just, just what I'm growing, growing more, work more. Okay. Thanks. So look, you ha you have a solid career r record. There's no denying that. But basically, bottom lining it, you just smoked someone that was ten and one in Bellator. Okay. Ne looking forward, next step. What's on your mind for next? I'm gonna smoke someone who's whatever, whatever in PFL. I'm gonna keep smoking people until they give me a really big check. That being said. I, I don't want to say if you win. If I lose, when, I understand. When you win, right? You can say if, it's fine. It's probabilities game. Okay. Not superstitious. If Not you win, least. who do you, th I know you said you haven't really looked at anybody else, but outside of like a Ray Cooper, is there someone that you really want opposite of you in the cage at the I think day? that last fight, I want to fight Magna Madoff. Like that's, in all honesty, that's the, probably the hardest fight for me here. I'm aware of it, and I know going into that fight, I'm going to be the massive underdog. In my head, he's everything I don't want to fight. Like, you know, just that top wrestling grinder with the submissions. But on New Year's Day, I want him across from me because I'm going to beat him, and I'm going to shut up every single person that's told me I can't do this, you're going to lose this fight, you're not good, you're okay. So beating him on New Year's Day proves that, you know, it's validation. I should have been here a long time ago, and I'm one of the best people in the world. Now, being a welterweight, Obviously, we just you guys lost somebody, you know, in Luis Taylor. Yeah. How would how does that affect you? B being that everything just days before the season starts flip flopped. It sucked because I went from being the main event to the uh, second fight in the card. I haven't fought that low in a card in like years, and it sucks. I really wanted to headline the first ESPN card, but uh, you know you can't control these things. So at the end of the day, I just got to keep on rolling, man. Like, my job doesn't change. The circumstances around it do. But you pay me money. You know, you guys pay me good money to come out here and beat a guy up, put on the show. doesn't matter who I'm fighting. My job description doesn't change. I'm going to go out there and perform the same as I always do. You know, I'm a puncher. I'm a boxer. Uh, plan A is uh, beating him up and you know, making him quit. Plan B is reinforcing plan A. So I'm going to do the same thing regardless of who you put in front of me. Thanks, Chris. Thanks a lot. How hard was it to actually come up with this year's roster compared to last year? Um, it, it was a little bit easier this year than it was last year because last year was our first year. And so nobody had heard of us. You know, we, we were out there, we were, we were saying what we were going to do, and it's a million dollar um, season. Uh, but nobody really, you know, uh, saw or seen us 
until the season actually started. And so once that season was done and everybody was presented with uh, the world title and crowned six world champions and a million dollars each, um, it, you know, it, the, the whole world's like, oh, wow, okay, this is, this is for real. And so um, signing finally was a lot easier this year than it was last year. And I think it's just going to get easier after this season. And just out of curiosity, last year, um, New York, Louisiana, California, Chicago, this year just Long Island and Atlantic City. Why the pulling down to just two venues as opposed to expanding out to even more? Uh, you know, that's ours. it was a good uh, venue for us last year, and, um, you know, we were able to do a, a, a good deal with them, and so... We felt like you know uh, we needed to be here, and then obviously I'm not sure if you're aware, but the playoffs is looking to be in Vegas, um, so that's in October, I believe. And so um, you know things just worked out that way, and uh, and we're happy with it. Cool, thank you. Great. Uh, cool. Overall, what do you think about the roster that they put together for you? Oh, I think it's fantastic. I mean, every girl has a winning record. It, well, until tonight, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think there's, you know, all different styles. There's moms, there's people from all over, there's different countries, there's, you know, world champions in Muay Thai and Olympic champions, and there's, you know, Sarah, who was the current Invicta champ and a former Strike Force champ and a real veteran of the sport. Um, young girl, I mean, Larissa's only like 23, you know, and she's already had 11 fights. You know, she's going to be, you know, she's going to be a star someday. Um... So I think it's great. I'm really excited to be a part of such an amazing group of, of women. And uh, I'm excited to be the baddest one of them all. On a much lighter note, you have a habit of watching Rocky movies before fights. Yes, I do. Um, which one did you watch tonight? I didn't watch any Rocky this time. Maybe that was the, that was the problem. We actually, I, my coaches watched Rocky three last night, which is my favorite. <laughs> so I feel like I, I got it by osmosis, but uh, no Rocky this time. I was... What did I? We played. Oh, we had an Uno tournament. That's why. That's why. Hey, Mike, who's who's the Uno champ? I will concede this time. Yeah. That's a good problem. <laughs> <laughs> Just call me champ. I guess you could say ATT uh, reigns supreme again. Uh, no, she was on fire. I'm on fire. I'm the Uno champ <laughs> of the world. Exactly. I've got a drop, a drop two Mike, how many points did you score in that last round we had? Why are you being mean to me? <laughs> <laughs> Zero. He, he didn't win a single game. Next subject. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. <laughs> God, I love Kayla Harrison. She is beyond super cool. She is beyond super nice. And we have the Rocky thing, so, you know, not that I'm going to steal away from Tony, uh, Anthony Rocco, Tony Martin, but we'll always have Balboa. Um, I, I still can't figure out why they, they've pared down, you know, Ray Sefo kind of, Skated past that answer and is what it is, but I just can't figure out why. I, I wish they would have been going to more venues, you know, one week here, one week there, one week there, one week here, not three, three, and the three playoff rounds in Vegas, you know, that's three venues and, you know, the finals are always going to be on New Year's at the Garden, well, Hulu Theater, um... Yeah, she is, Rudy. Um, so it's four venues. You're cutting off so many places to go. I'll never understand, but moving along, much more important news. The UFC. Ay, 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 ay. Where do I start? Okay. I'm going to round out everything from this weekend in one thing. Guys like me. Reporters, fans have no business telling pro athletes when to retire. We don't. We're not walking in their shoes by a long shot. However, how freaking 
ever. There are six UFC fighters right now. Well, five that should, one that really shouldn't, but... And the one that really shouldn't is Rose Namajunas. I think her being power-bombed on Saturday night might have rattled her. But here's the deal. She's always said she, she wants to do something outside. Okay? She wants to uh, have a farm. She wants to grow marijuana. You know, she lives in Colorado. It's legal. Um, I Here's the thing. If the UFC keeps allowing guys like Anderson Silver, BJ Penn, to continue to fight, then commissions have the obligation to say no. They're the final line, okay? Promo promoters and promotions will put, they'll put me into the ring. They don't give a damn, okay? They only care about one thing, their bottom line. They will take BJ Penn when he's dead six years and roll his carcass into a cage if they can sell a couple of extra tickets. It's commission's job to say no more, no mas. Okay. Anderson Silva, he's in the same boat right now. He's beyond a gatekeeper. Okay. Meanwhile, Tom Dukinwa, who's 25 years old, prime of his life, says he has to retire from MMA because he can't concentrate on other things he wants to do in life. He hasn't reached half his prime yet, and he's walking away. It goes to show you who takes what more importantly? Now, look, I get it. Fighters, especially fighters more than any other pro athlete, always think they got one more left in them. Sometimes you don't. Now, I get it. Nobody has the right to say you should retire we, no more. I don't want to see BJ Penn, who is now... Barely a 500 fighter in his career turned into Apollo Creed. Because I can assure you this, folks. If there is a death in the cage, in the octagon, there's going to be hell to pay across the board. There will be lawsuit upon lawsuit upon lawsuit. And then you can kiss this whole sport goodbye. Because one, once one domino falls, it's all going. The CTE issue will explode. A death. Nobody needs to see that. Nobody. Um, that being said, the... the as far as I'm concerned, little nogs in that situation too. Diego Alves should walk away now because he's a coach at ATT. He has other things going on. This was his last fight. Leave it alone. Um, Jose Aldo, I think, despite him losing a unanimous decision, surprisingly, in his backyard... I think Jose might have one or two left. I'll cut Jose some slack. And he's the only one who I'm going to cut some slack about this retirement thing. I'll let him stick around for a couple more. But I'm telling you, the older he gets, that cut to 145 is murder. And I think him at 155 would be destroyed. Those top guys at 155 are killers. And I don't know if it would translate. 
Same thing like we saw with Max Holloway right off the bat. 145 to 155 did not translate. Um, as far as this Bellator card, and like I spoke to Miss Kerry Steller about two weeks ago when she was sitting right here. When it's everything on one night, it's not good. It's not good for guys like me. It really isn't. It, it, it's it's not good. And plus, we had the boxing on Saturday, too. So it was triple the amount of headache for me. Okay. Hard to watch MMA, MMA, boxing all at the same time, especially since I only got two eyeballs. One, two, kind of hard. You, you... you you saw some incredible finishes at Bellator. As a matter of fact, I call these my finishes of the weekend. Now, you might say Cyclone, finishes of the weekend, where's the video? I got news for you. They're shutting down everybody playing videos of fights, but Companies cannot stop me or stop talk, stop you from talking about them. So, ha ha, companies, I got you. I told you, me is always one or two steps ahead of the game. And this is one of them for me. Finishes the weekend. Douglas Lima, and everyone's saying, oh, he derailed the hype train of MVP. The fact of the matter is, MVP lost to... The most underrated fighter, period, in Douglas Lima. Lima is the, he's a killer. He is an absolute killer. And he's so underrated because he doesn't talk. He's so quiet. He's more quiet than most guys. As a matter of fact, he reminds me a lot of Ray Cooper because Ray Cooper is super quiet too. And that's why he's always overlooked. The fact of the matter is, guys that know the sport, guys, you guys who love MMA know just how great Douglas Lima is. So it, it, there should not be talk of he derailed a hype train. MVP was undefeated. And you're going to say, oh, he, he beat nobody. He beat everybody that was put in front of him. That's the way it is. Okay. As a matter of fact, MVP was was giving it to Douglas Lima, but good. And Lima with, with, with a leg sweep kick and, and just a right uppercut from hell. So like the RKO out of nowhere. I'm going to use my right hand since it was a right uppercut. It's my finish of the weekend. Bar none. And you might say the, the, the power bomb, power slam that... Andrade did should be a great finish. Uh, that right uppercut from Lima was beautiful. Um, Span ending ending the the, the fight with, with Little Nog was a great finish as well. As was now look was it controversial eh, between Patricio Pitbull and, and Michael Chandler? Here's the problem. With now Patricio being a champ champ, he's going to have to vacate one of those belts. And I can't see him staying at lightweight because he would be lit up like a Christmas tree. I really think so. So, who knows? Maybe a quick lightweight tournament, you know, top four or five guys, top four or six guys go at it. I, I, I think... This needs to be a, a priority for Scott Coker to ask Pitbull exactly what he wants to do. Which belt does he want to hold on to? And quite frankly, I think Scott Coker needs that to do that with Ryan Bader too and say, look, you've held both. It's either light heavyweight or heavyweight. It's one or the other. And that's the thing I like about Bell. Belto's going the, the, the tournament route and I said this before, I'll say it again. The featherweight tournament that they're going to have, the fact that it's 
16 fighters, eight fights, all on one card. That first round, it's going to be awesome. I just happen to think it's going to be at Mohegan Sun in October, which I got fingers and arms and eyes all crossed for. Because I want to be there for it. It's going to be amazing. All right. Um, I think that I covered everything. I believe I have. Although, oh, wait. I know what I wanted to say. Early in the Belto card, and I'm not going to say his name because I'm going to butcher it, the Mongolian tornado had a war this is you don't want to see total wars of phone booth fighting center of the cage two guys slugging out because it what in effect they do is take years off their lives they leave the cage knowing that they're going to be ending their lives sooner because of a great war and the Mongolian tornado had a massive war with Adam Ward on the undercard of the Belto card. And you have to go back on YouTube and you, and you have to check this fight out. And it, it's a classic trait of Mongolian, Asian, that part of the world. These fighters are so under the radar and they're vicious they are vicious you're starting to see that now as you watch one championship asian fighters are serious threats don't get me wrong i'm all about the red white and blue but fighters from the, the far east are a whole new ball game now, I've completed this weekend stuff. I think it was pretty good. Um, I need you guys to do me. I said it before, I'll say it again. Click share. Please. Um, the five, the, the, you guys watching right now? Really fast. Hit share. And, you know what, I, I'm going to... Today is May 13th. For the rest of this month, for the month of May, for the month of May and the month of May only, you go to CycloneComedy.com, you make a purchase, I will throw in a free gift for you. I think that's fair. I really, really do. Now, what's going to happen next is... In a little while, you guys are going to keep it right here on Strong Island Television. And you're going to want, watch the Newman Show. Okay? And when we come back, we're going to have some games right after this. I'm Dennis Bermudez. Hi, I'm a creepy Ian McCall. Yo, I'm Kelvin Gaston. This is Mark Goldberg. Yo, I'm the world's most dangerous man, Hall of Famer Ken Shamrock, and you're getting tapped out in the cage with Psycho. All right, we got two quick birthdays today. We have Josh Ferguson, not related by any chance to...
Tony Ferguson turns the ripe old age of 31, as well as Arjun Buller, who turns two years older at the age of 33. Also happening today in MMA history, two years ago, UFC 211. Time freaking flies. Obviously on that card, um, Frankie Edgar, Jersey Zone, K.O. Yair Rodriguez, say that ten times fast, um, Joanna defended her title by a unanimous decision over the new strawweight queen, Jessica Andrade. By the way, I don't necessarily... I think the UFC, no offense to anybody in other countries, I think the UFC needs their champions to be able to speak English. I'm not turning into Donald Trump or anything, but it's just better for the company if all champions spoke the language. It's one of the issues I had with Jose Aldo. At this point in in, in time, okay, everything, we're we're living in one world, everyone is kumbaya. I think it's high time that people learn to speak English. I really do. And and I want to catch no slack on that, okay? It's the truth. You go to other countries, they speak their language. You come here, everybody speaks everything. English should be the language, especially for a champion. Um, And also, let's not forget on that 211 card, was Stipe Miocic rematching JDS and TKOing him. Okay, let's quickly do a raffle. Let's give away a prize. All right, question number one comes from Storm Estes, and I'm surprised I can read my own handwriting right now, and I don't need my glasses. Um, what did you make of the Chandler Pitbull stoppage? Ref's job is to protect the fighter from himself. I'd rather a ref stop a fight a split second too soon than a split second too late. It's been my opinion since day one of me watching combat sports. Better to err on the side of caution than have someone completely have their face caved in. So that's what I think, Storm. Um, question number two comes from the red hot Kenny Hodgkins. Um, what will MVP have to do in the next year to earn a title shot? After his loss to Lima. I don't know. Um, he's going to have to get back on another winning streak. Kenny. Um, th- th- there's so many right now. At Welterweight. And remember. Whoever wins the Grand Prix. Is going to have built in. Rematches along the line. So there's now a line of people. Lima's somewhere in the middle of the pack now. So. I don't know. I really don't. Maybe him against, I don't know, John Fitch. Let's see what happens in that type of a match. Polar opposites. Um, And question number three comes from John James, my dear friend, in Chi-Town. Jake Hager is talking title after just two fights. How would he do against the top guys? I don't think he'd do good, John. I really don't. Guys, they, he might be able to hang with like a Justin Wren or a Steve Mallory, but he couldn't handle uh, Tyrell Fortune. He's not going to be able to hand a handle a Roy Nelson. Even a Fedor, I think a Fedor could beat him right now. So there's your answer. I don't think he'd do that good against the top, top. Middle pack, maybe. Top, anyways. Really fast, let's find a winner of this prize. And the winner is going to be numero two. Wow, Kenny Hodgkins at it again 
winning another prize. Holy smokes. Kenny's nonstop. I think this is like five straight, four or five straight wins for Kenny Hodgkins. Anyways, guys, the Newman Show is coming up next. Keep it right here on Strong Island Television. Next week, I may or may not have a guest. I'm working on it. Um, so until next week, I am Cyclone saying, like I say all the time, just because all of you out there are not athletes doesn't mean you guys can't be athletic supporters. Bye-bye.